Uh, as far as the challenges of, of translating, they're considerable. I think they're considerable whenever, um, because I think, you know, as a translator, you're a co-author. You know, you're taking something that exists in another language, you're bringing it into another cultural and linguistic milieu, um, and you're having to represent that in a way that hopefully does justice to the original. It's not the same as the original text. You'll never have an identical text in a, tra in a translation to the original. Uh, so you have to approximate that the best way possible. And I think the best literary translations are done by people who are themselves poets or writers, who have a sense of the music of language. And, um, and so for, for that reason, you know, you bring a great deal of creativity to the project. But that creativity has a, there's a line, there's a border you can't cross because you have an obligation to the text in the original form, to the author, that you're not modifying his texts in a way that don't actually do justice or not an accurate representation of, of, of the effects that are achieved in these stories uh, in the original language. But you also have an obligation to history. When I'm translating a, a, a writer like Doggerman, I have one, I want to connect with a contemporary American audience in this case. Uh, so I have to try to work it in such a way so that modern day readers are going to be able to get something out of this and identify with it. So it's not going to feel dated in a sense. But at the same time, I can't do that so much that uh, I lose the sense of the historical context of the work when it was originally written in the 1940s or early 50s. And so that's always a it's an interesting sort of challenge in the translation process, this balancing act. So I think in some ways a translator has to be one part creative writer, one part literary historian, one part cultural historian, and part editor. Uh, and you, you wear all of these different roles, and it's not always easy.